Okay, so the first muscle I'm going to talk about is the cricothyroid muscle. So the cricoid has two muscles which attach to it, the first of which is the cricothyroid, and you've also got the cricoarytenoid muscles, which I'll come on to next. So we're looking anteriorly at the larynx, and you can see these muscles attaching to the, the anterior narrow arch of the cricoid cartilage. So you can see that this muscle has two distinct um, parts. So you've got a straight part and an oblique part. So the straight part or vertical part is attached to the inferior margin of the thyroid cartilage and the oblique part is attached, you can see here, to the inferior horn of the thyroid cartilage. So let's take a look at the action of this muscle. So I'll just get rid of this muscle here which is the inferior pharyngeal constrictor and this, remember this attaches along the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage. So important to remember is the crico, the cricothyroid joint is um, one of the articulations of the laryngeal cartilages and this muscle produces an action at this joint so the inferior horn of the thyroid cartilage articulates with a facet on the lateral aspect of the cricoid cartilage so when this muscle contracts you can see that if it pulls this way it's going to bring the thyroid forward and the this part can pull it downwards. So you get forward and downward movement of the thyroid cartilage when the cricothyroid muscle contracts. So it's pulled downwards and forwards. So what are the implications of this movement? Well just imagine if the thyroid cartilage is pulled forward and downwards what's going to happen to the to the vocal ligaments inside? They're going to be stretched so if you stretch the vocal ligaments, you're going to get um, more tension in the, in the vocal cords. So a greater amount of tension in the vocal cords is going to produce a higher pitched sound. So remember the guitar string analogy. If you've got a loose guitar string, it's going to make a very low sound. If you've got a very tight guitar string, it will produce a higher pitched sound. So by bringing the thyroid cartilage forwards and downwards, m tension is placed on these vocal cords and you're it allows a high pitched sound to be produced. So the the cricothyroid muscle is innervated by the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve which comes from the vagus nerve. So out of all the intrinsic muscles of the larynx which I'm going to talk about this is the only one which is innervated by the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve. All the rest of the muscles which I'm going to talk about are innervated by the recurrent laryngeal branch of the vagus. So remember that this one's an exception and it's innervated by the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve. So next we're going to look at um, some muscles which attach the cricoid cartilage to the arytenoid cartilage. So you can guess what these are called. These are the cricoarytenoid muscles. So if I rotate the larynx around to the back and we'll just get rid of the the, um, the thyroid cartilage temporarily. We've got some muscles which sit on the posterior and the upper parts of the cricoid arch at the back of the cricoid cartilage. So they're not shown on this model but they're called the posterior cricoarytenoid muscles and you've got the lateral cricoarytenoid muscles and the two part, these two parts have different functions. So we'll first take a look at the posterior cricoarytenoid muscles. So these, remember I mentioned that there's two depressions on either side of the posterior lamina of the cricoid cartilage. This is for the origin of the posterior cricoarytenoid muscles. So this is where the, the muscles originate. So I've just switched over to a posterior view of the larynx. So it's showing these muscles clearly. So we're looking at the back. This is the broad lamina at the back of the cricoid cartilage. We've got the epiglottis up here shown with its mucosa, the aryepiglottic folds, and you can see the cuneiform and corniculate cartilage is suspended in that. And then you've got the, the posterior cricoarytenoid muscles attaching on the oval depressions on either side of the midline of the posterior surface of the cricoid cartilage. So these muscles insert onto the muscular process of the arytenoid cartilage. So if you remember, the arytenoid cartilage has two processes. You've got the muscular process, which sticks out posteriorly and laterally, 
and you've got the vocal process which sticks out anteriorly and serves as a point of attachment for the vocal ligament. So just coming back to the 3D model, if I just rotate the model so we can look superiorly, you'll be able to see these two processes. So you can see the process sticking anteriorly, the vocal process, and the muscular process sticking out posteriorly and laterally. So the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle attaches onto this, this muscular process. So what this does when it contracts is if, if you imagine this vocal, this muscular process being pulled around this way, it's going to swivel the arytenoid cartilages around on their axis. So it will laterally rotate the arytenoid cartilages. So remember that the distance between the two vocal folds is called the rimaglottidis. So if you were to swivel the arytenoid cartilages around on their accent, axis, laterally rotating them, this is going to produce um, an opening of the rimaglottidis. So the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle opens the rimaglottidis and it's the only muscle that does this. So it's important to, to get a grip of the sort of movements that occur at the cricoarytenoid joint. So the arytenoid cartilages are really interesting because they can, they can be laterally rotated like I showed you here. Um, they can also be abducted, so they can be moved side to side. And they can also be rocked backwards and forwards. So there's a few movements that the arytenoid cartilages can do. So the next part of the cricoarytenoid muscle is the lateral cricoarytenoid and this originates on the upper part of this cricoid arch so it sits laterally on the cricoid, car cricoid cartilage and it inserts again onto the muscular process but because of its different origin it's going to produce a different action on the arytenoid. Because it sits in front of the muscular process when it contracts it's going to produce the opposite action to the posterior cricoid, cricoarytenoid muscle. So when the, when the lateral cricoarytenoid muscle contracts, it's going to pull the muscular process this direction. So it's going to internally rotate the arytenoid cartilages, and it's going to close the rimaglottidis. So this results in abduction of the vocal cords, and it brings the vocal cords together. So in this diagram, you can see the cricoarytenoid, well, the lateral cricoarytenoid here, sitting on the top of the um, the cricoid arch, on the upper part of the cricoid arch. So this is a kind of this is a, a view from the medial aspect. So it's been kind of dissected in half. You can see the thyroid cartilage has been cut here, and you're looking at the medial aspect of the um, lateral cricoarytenoid here. So it sits and originates on the upper part of the cricoid cartilage, and it inserts onto the muscular process, but it produces the opposite action of the cricoarytenoid posterior muscle. So remember I said that all the muscle, intrinsic muscles of the larynx are innervated by the recurrent laryngeal nerve except for the cricothyroid muscle which is innervated by the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve.